Good morning. Welcome to day 18 of this 30 and 30 series. This week, I'm covering mental models helpful in promoting our own personal journeys of change. In order to change, I believe a key characteristic is humbling ourselves on what we know and what we don't. We all have those know-it-all friends. We've seen mansplaining go down and well-intentioned or not, we've all been given bad advice from somebody who had no place in giving in the first place. We're probably all pretty guilty of this as well. So in steps the circle of competence. Let's discuss what is this heralded concept from Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger? Why do we think it is bigger than it really is at times? And how can we use it in our process towards learning and change? I'm going to risk using a sports analogy to describe this concept only because Warren uses this all of the time. Ted Williams is one of the best hitters baseball has ever seen. He's the last person to go through a full season hitting over 400, which means he was successful at getting on base 40% of the time. He was better than anybody else at this, not because of his physical attributes, but because he knew his circle of competency. He broke down the strike zone into 77 spaces and analyzed that if he waited for a ball to come to his sweet spot, he would get a hit about 40% of the time, compared to other areas where if he swung, he would get a hit 20% of the time. He was fantastic because of his decision-making on when to take action and when to not. Now, we're not all baseball players, but we too have a circle of competence. The important thing, as Buffett advises, is not how big our circle is, but understanding its boundaries. The issue for many is the want to have a bigger circle, in turn thinking our circle is bigger than it is. This often involves a cognitive bias known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. The catalyst for this study comes from hilarious means. In 1995, we were all introduced to the world's worst bank robber in MacArthur Wheeler, also known as the Invisible Lemon Man. Wheeler robbed banks without a mask, with his face covered by lemon juice because he thought it would make him invisible to security cameras. He had a baseline knowledge that lemon juice is used as invisible ink, but this obviously didn't work. When caught, all he could say was, but I wore the juice. Fascination with this case led David Dunning, a Cornell psychologist, to run controlled studies of this state of illusory superiority. And what he found was that those most lacking in knowledge and skills are least able to appreciate that lack and tend to gravely overestimate their ability. It comes from a place of lacking self-awareness and lacking an idea of comparison. Those with the highest capabilities are aware and know their limits. The lesson here is we all have a bit of this illusory superiority, don't we? We all think we know more than the average person and definitely more than we actually do. But unless we delve into deep discussion with others or really have real world experience, we really have no basis. And therein lies the opportunity for us to humble ourselves and to learn. When we make decisions that land within our circle of competence, things usually fall in our favor. But life isn't a baseball game. We can't just wait for the perfect pitch. It is full of uncertainty with imperfect information. So sticking to our own circle of competence, understanding its boundaries and seeking information outside of our circle is imperative for growth and for taking the right action. That's all I got for today. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow.